Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. You can find a seat or stand, find a good place to stand. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. I'm here to introduce today's lecturer, Professor Nan Wang Ian. Many of you may know Nan already from the professional seminars, branding strategies, but you probably don't know Nan's whole list of titles. Nan is one of the most versatile designers I've met. He's a graphic designer, branding strategist, fashion designer, industrial designer, and photographer. Nan received his Bachelor of Arts with distinctions in both fashion design and industrial design from Tsinghua University. He has also studied at Royal College of Art in London, London College of Design, and University of Macau. Nan's fashion design work have won various awards. His fashion design work, Metamorphosis, which you will get to see in today's lecture, was awarded the Emergent Fur Design by Copenhagen Fur, the largest fur auction company in the world. Beyond design, Nan is also an entrepreneur. He is the founding partner of Your Side Hotel Shanghai and Your Side Design, an interdisciplinary architectural, interior design, graphic, and branding design and research office based in Shanghai. Your Side Design have won numerous awards worldwide, including but not limited to Architectural Digest 100 Young, Architecture Master Prize, and Best Interdisciplinary Practice of Build Architecture Awards. With so many achievements and titles listed, I really can't wait to hear the lecture and find out how he managed to do all of this. Please join me in a round of applause and welcome Ian Wang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina, for the warm introduction. And uh, thank you, Dean Speaks, uh, for inviting me to, to teach here for so many years. And, uh, and thanks for coming for the lecture. And, uh, I'm so thrilled to, you know, to share, I can share some ideas in Syracuse architecture today. Um, I will share more about some, uh, um, uh, my, my journey, my whole journey, and with you and the world, how I have been doing all the time um, to push the boundary of the traditional design for a norms is, ne um, is not my purpose. It's actually um, some kinds of the results uh, when I am trying to, uh, Solve the problem. So the metamorph uh, the problem, uh, the possibilities of metamorphosis is kind of uh, my problem solving process. So um, yeah, prob people's problems, clients' problem, and society's my own problem. And uh, my mom ma made me uh, realize that I'm a little bit, you know, I'm sensitive and artistic a little bit when I when she saw me uh, drawing, you know, like a glass a glass full of the hot water in her office. Um, I cannot, we cannot find the original piece, but uh, she clearly remembered that I, I, I just drew the uh, three uh, kind of oval, uh, ovals and the two parallel lines and a little, you know, a, a cloud of steam above. And uh, yeah, which stunned all her colleagues. And uh, one, maybe one of her, one of her colleagues just took it and uh, hoped that it could be sold a group, group price when I became a famous artist someday. So which uh, I think I, I think it's a promising investment. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. So it's, I, I was a very shy boy and I was not good at talking and uh, I had a terrible stammer, but uh, so I kept drawing and uh, folding paper um, uh, to, to seek praise from my parents until uh, I attended uh, a National Art College examination, entrance examination uh, when I finished high school. Um, in China, the college entrance examination fever for art is getting stronger and stronger and uh, even and, and the, yeah, the, the fever cannot be brought down even, the, uh, even when the employment rate is the lowest. So every year we, are, we have one million uh, students, candidates to, to, to uh, compete in China and I have to send out among maybe 20,000 students to, to, in my hometown so as to enter the Tsinghua University, Tsinghua University uh, which is the, um, maybe the top one university as people say. And, um, yeah, so the whole system, uh, system is like a um, huge uh, machine producing so-called artists. So my first major um, in Tsinghua University is, uh, it was industrial design. And um, yeah, which is uh, still, the uh, still the best. And uh, during that time, I, 
I've learned um, design is a type of a tool to, 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 to teach people how to get a better life. Um, but I found that my interest maybe probably um, uh, might be more in myself. So uh, dealing with my own problems uh, was probably my um, more important to me at that time. So I started my fashion design education and I um, uh, fell in love with fashion design. I cannot, uh, because it may, might be, it can be more emotional. So the first possibility as I would like to share is uh, uh, my earliest fashion design work. And uh, yeah, before the 2012, so I may, may be a little bit old, maybe uh, outdated, but, um, yeah, but, but to me, some, some things, some moving things never get old, and this is basically uh, my fashion portfolio with three projects. Uh, I had my inspiration, I had the uh, design development, and uh, the frame, and uh, most importantly, I had the theme to lead them all, the possibilities of respect. So, in fact, these three projects are all about relations between the people, uh, between the human beings and all the existence, like, uh, so I was focusing on the respect which I was obsessed with um, to connect them, to blur the boundaries between them. Um, yes, yeah, so all, uh, it's all about my attitude to the world. And the first one is the metamorphosis, um, which I borrow from Kafka and uh, a possibility of respect uh, between people and uh, animal. And personally, I love animals, especially uh, even terrifying animals like snakes and spiders and bugs. So, um, so the metamorphosis is inspired by the images, uh, by the moment that people hide behind their hands become uh, because of shame or fear or something, other reasons we don't know, but uh, animals also have the same emotions and behaviors. Um, so basically, we are the same. Oops, nice one. Okay. I chose shame because people are shame of what they have done um, to animals. So I would rather transform themselves to, into animals is what I want to, to perform in my work. So I researched for hundreds of images to, to, to figure out uh, how can I um, just transform human beings to, to, to animals? Uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of animal is suitable? and um, strong. So also I found some artists were doing the same thing as well. So um, like sometimes owners, like in the middle you can see, owners just look like their pets and they all brought me new ideas. So then I did some modifications for their work. And sketched animals in order to find out my own language, my own design language. And uh, so this is a kind of idea board or sketch our process, thinking process. So at that time, I didn't figure out what I could do. So I just um, sketched over and over again. And also I perfectly kept them all. You know, this is really essential for me to, 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 to preserve the whole process and uh, much clearer right now. And you can see I began to do the clash and sketches together to find out um, more, maybe more practical ways, practical ways to use in my costume, and further sketches about animals performed on human bodies or costumes. So at this stage, I just realized perhaps I can do, uh, I could do something um, more fun, not merely a costume or clothes. So this is almost the last step. Um, I chose four looks, uh, which are um, more practical and mature to, 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 to physically accomplish. So you will find out more um, details like the material, the fur, and the coloration, the structure uh, were forming and becoming clear. Here I need to introduce the background story. Um, our fashion department had a collaboration with the Copenhagen Fur and uh, for our thesis. So Copenhagen Fur just provided each one student uh, some mink fur to make it up. Uh, to, but, but, but everyone could only have um, chose one look to extend and develop because uh, fur is too expensive. Um, so in the end, they will um, choose one winner to visit their studio, design studio in Copenhagen. So I just, um, I realized that it was impossible to win because, you know, it's, um, the furries had been given to us, but my work is super eco-friendly. 
And uh, so I asked my tutor, can I just continue my project? And uh, definitely, I, could, I, I, could, I couldn't win, but my tutor just uh, told me, it's okay, you just um, um, see your design as, a, as an irony. So your theme and the title is the most important. You have to follow your title all the time. So I just enhanced the irony. Um, I chose the most precious and human-like animal uh, as my final direction, the monkey. Yes, I just um, narrowed down to monkeys, you know, all kinds of gestures of hiding people's face uh, like this. And it's, it's a neutral collection, so I just performed them on both male and female bodies. And uh, finally, I select this one, a kind of accessory uh, which looks like monkey instead of a, 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 a sweater or something. In this case, monkey's hands are almost uh, also a model's hands. So when people wear it and just put hands down like this, they look like you know just a, wearing a costume. But when people hide their face uh, uh, with their hands, it will look like a uh, monkey, cover people's face instead of people ourselves. So yes, yeah, so if, if, you're, if you're not ashamed, monkey will do it is, instead, right? So this is not just a metamorphosis of a human body, it's a kind of um, spiritual transformation. So the final work, I won. I, I won the final competition. And uh, the journey I traveled to Copenhagen just finished my, my ironic project. And as, I am still stunned because you know they they know about they knew about my 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 ironic concept, and I really appreciate it. The second fashion project I name it is um, industrial revolution. The second possibility of respect I want to uh, dig is the relationship between the uh, uh, the human being and the machine. So respecting all the human-made things like uh, machinery. Uh, I just. Uh, researched one of the beginning industrial revolution. So I basically summarized um, interaction from the people to robot, from the organic to inorganic. So about organic and inorganic, I just searched so many images, uh, cases as well. So I seemingly the most like, uh, most human-like, but essentially the least human-like things, machinery. This uh, has so many sim similarities and differences with human beings. So I, in, the same, I, in the same way, I just sketched many and wrote down ideas. And also, I did many material experiments. PVC may be one of the far farthest uh, material away from the human, human wear. So uh, for this re uh, reason, I was particularly obsessed with PVC. So material experiments combined with the costume sketches. Some are more practical and some are more experimental. And anyway, I, I developed a simple way to, to use in my fashion week, uh, fashion design. And I, uh, I believe this kind of you know, graphic performance, like the left side, you can see can rep uh, represent my, uh, the organic and inorganic at the same time. So it's more like a uh, symbol or elements, graphic elements, to especially express my concept in this project. So this project made me realize perhaps I could develop my own um, graphic language uh, into the fashion design. The process, some 3D cutting and models, and the final renderings. You can find out some organic shapes and from human beings and some inorganic elements from the robots. So. So my tutor said to me that uh, you're a graphic designer among the fashion designers, but I'm, I know, I, I, I just accept his comments, even if I know he, he, he didn't accept my, <laughs> my 2D expression. So anyway, the, the, this last one is called face-to-face. -face. Um, finally, I focus on ourselves. So absolutely, we need the possibility of, uh, of the respect. And, uh, but I didn't concentrate on the people, different people. I just, um, I'm worse, I'm still uh, interested in the people, uh, in individual. So um, everyone just have several uh, faces, uh, outside and inside, good and evil. Uh, how, how do we handle them? Um, costume is kind of a face you choose. And uh, maybe, so maybe that you, your, your clothes can represent yourself better. So um, yeah, as a fashion student, I, can, I couldn't avoid this. 
theme. And this project, I, firstly, I researched all offices I can define, like human bodies, like uh, some surfaces concerning to human, and uh, expressions on the faces, etc., etc. I just applied some, some expressions on the body. And uh, at that stage, I just so obsessed. I was obsessed with the uh, uh, geometrical shapes on the costume, and uh, I wanted to to just combine them together. Maybe it's not a perfect choice. I was a student, I have so many ideas, and uh, I was eager to deliver. Uh, so, so the, this might be not my favorite projects because not it's not just the simplified, but yeah, still a nice try. The final renderings. Yeah, I picture them more like, you know, the relaxing sketches. But it's uh, contradictory if you want to uh, combine the relaxation, relaxation and the combination, uh, uh, com completion together. So, but, uh, yeah, nice try. We have four kinds of geometric faces were applied on the final costume design. Some trials and the, the final model fitting. There are all three fashion uh, works I finished, and uh, I could say there are several, um, several versions of a metamorphosis relating to the respect. And uh, I need to work, uh, look sometimes, look back sometimes, you know, even if it's my work's a little naive, but uh, that's why I reused the metamorphosis to, as my lecture title to, to think about the, 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 um, the choices I made afterwards. Metamorphosis were about my own transformation. Uh, I switched since around 2012. And uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I solving problem is uh, as my initial uh, uh, motive. And uh, I met a, pro a project by chance. And what I was thinking about, how, how, how could I open the fashion design studio in Shanghai? And one of my architect friends, uh, Yan Fei Shui, Xuan Fei, just invited me to, to design a, a, a branding package for their co-working space in Shanghai. So just because I just um, I sent him my tote bag, I designed. So the, my, my first branding project has uh, just begun. And I borrowed uh, Infinity Sign uh, as the logo of our co-working space because, you know, our co-working spaces are the places um, you can meet infinite possibilities. So that's simple, the concept. And um, it's quite simple because I just uh, rotate the number eight down and it became, becomes infinity. And in China, clients uh, love the number eight because it's Chinese pronunciation. Ba sounds like um, the Chinese character fa and which means far mean, it means become rich. So, yeah, <laughs> this is, yeah, that's normal. And these are my first trials of graphic design, some functional like wayfinding design and more, and more decorative like the wallpaper. Then I use the majors I have learned um, to expand more products design for them, uh, like the, the hats design, the backpacks, and even the belts. Just use logo directly. Even mascot design and the related, uh, related emoji uh, stickers. I know this uh, design of mine is uh, not mature, but I have to do it. I have to help them. And uh, without thinking of whether I'm a, it's my major or not, so yeah, they trust me. But in the end, they, very, they were very satisfied with my design. And likewise, and. Uh, an international technology competition found me and let me be responsible for their, the, the whole package, visual design of their party. And it's still immature but fun. It's local, it's concepts, it's an a, a integra uh, integration of the uh, ancient and of the future. So uh, the logo shows the pre prehistoric creature dinosaur and uh, transformed by the, I just made up a story for them. Uh, the, transformed by future technology into color-changing uh, geometrical forms like this. The, the repetitive circular ge geometries just allow the new transformation you know, into the uh, different emotions, activities, and uh, interactions for various values. I just love it, and uh, I volunteered to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to name it Dino, and uh, so they just have a simple name instead of uh, the long one. 
another small project I can draw. So I just drew three different uh, gestures for of the weavers, and they're nice um, to just apply on the package design. Yeah, and. Uh, only half of each weaver is on each side, and uh, on the opening side, the physical thread to seal uh, the envelope relates to the to printed grass. So when people open the envelope, the, the whole weaver burst is revealed. Uh, and among my concept is that uh, it looks like the weaver is trying to tie tie up the 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 the, the, uh, the package the below. So just co connect the relationship. I uh, just connect the relationship between the abstract and the the reality. And uh, starting from 2019, uh, that is the most Im important stage for to me. And I completely uh, opened myself up to embrace the more possibilities. So some people may say I'm, a, I'm kind of a crossover design, but I think I'm not. I would rather to call myself um, a problem-solving practitioner uh, with the methods of kind of melting or fusing the the, the, the boundaries between the design and uh, the, band, the method is branding. So um, here I wanted to borrow this big like, metaphor. Uh, it's like a glue to, to bind most of the areas together. So yeah, at the same time, I have the opportunity to touch um, more areas, to learn more. And the first area I touched is, uh, is architecture. And uh, Professor Fei Wang and I travel a lot and I have to say, he's um, I'm architecturally uh, influenced by him, and I experienced the, wor the works of the you know, architecture uh, masterpieces um, before I knew them. So yeah, this is a strong impact to give me uh, fresh feelings about them. And like La Tourette Monastery in France, designed by Le Corbusier, and I was so touched by everything there, and I wanted to be uh, to do something for it. So this monastery is still operational, so we can stay there for nights. Um, a lot of inspired me about how can we reuse the, the abundant architecture, and they were so precious. And uh, I just um, I just imagined the, uh, an architectural conference, aiming for you know discussing on preservation and the restoration on architecture. So it's called free concrete. And I borrowed Le Corbusier's free plan idea. So I just, um, so the free, the word free here is, uh, can be seen as a verb or an adjective, and which means set, set architecture free, or architecture is free. So this is like an exploration between typography and architecture. Yeah, it shows the process of the variations. And the typography for the conference is subtracted from the uh, Corbusier's architecture and uh, artwork with the free form and the color. So, yeah, just reflect his idea. I tried also the program of conference with a double side. Take his design and then print it and let's see how it looks like. Yeah, the posters, three variations of posters. Yeah, I just embedded the. Uh, in the space of the lateral, so as to see the e effect. I took thousands of photos, um, not thousands, hundreds of photos in there, so I can Photoshop my design in them. This is the reading room. Yeah. Also promotional materials like tote bags and t-shirts. Just use single letters with the, with the combined color, uh, printed in the, in the back to create a cohesive uh, branding identity. Yeah, this is um, uh, this is interesting project. I it's my self-initiated project named the space folding typeface design. And uh, during that stage, during this stage, I focused on um, typeface itself to uh, to figure out the relationships between the letters. So uh, it is inspired by the uh, uh, an imaginary space travel technology from a from a fiction, uh, sci-fi fiction called Doom, and uh, Doom, um, and, um, written by Frank Herbert. So also the shape of the composition is more or less influenced by uh, uh, constellation. Yes, uh, animation, and to express his folding action, uh, each capital letters is animated to 
to transform into any other 25, uh, 25 capital letters from, 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 from now on. So yeah, other, just another metamorphosis. So I, I seem to enjoy finding transformation to express interrelationships sometimes. So this is one, just only one way I found. Yeah, accordingly, uh, 26 small letters and, and, and the 10 numbers. And I just quoted several lines from the fiction Doom and applied the, 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 this font into, into them. I think it's not that uh, uh, confusing. Yeah, you can still read it. So also I set up a poster. I just, uh, um, just apply this font into three titles. So just um, space folding can, this font can uh, literally uh, or lively save, save space in this poster. Oh, this project. Um, yeah, this project is still related to the architecture. And it's the first pro project I, I got in US at the beginning of this year. And it's a promotional uh, material for Cornell University. Uh, it's a symposium, um, AAP symposium. And Leslie Locke, who was responsible for this symposium, just invited me to, to uh, help them to make his uh, visual materials stunning, not just uh, design a long-term logo, uh, but also to make a set of animation to facilitate their uh, online promotion. Yeah, their title this year is called Fringe, New Centers for Architecture and Urbanism. So the fringe is an, I have to introduce a little bit, uh, um, fringe is an ambiguous patchwork of zones that form a wide range of territorial landscapes which can be characterized as neither um, urban nor rural. So yeah, these multivalent rural urban zones constitute new conceptual centers for architecture and urbanism. So the core of the symposium is, a more, uh, is about materials that attendees are applying. So this symposium features some of the Asia's leading architectural firms like Wang Shu, like, and in addition to lectures, uh, there were also, and uh, there was an awesome exhibition. So regarding the promotion materials, I just focus on the visual extension and like the patchwork of the, all the, the raw materials used by the participants of this forum and, and exhibition to show what seems to be a marginal, uh, but actually constitutes a new architectural planning landscape and style. Just emphasizing the theme of the cross scale and uh, advanced uh, materials. So basically, I took all the interesting materials that exhibition uh, was using, like to, uh, like yeah, there's a bamboo, and um, it's actually the this is the elephant poop. <laughs> yeah, so many yeah raw elephant poop. And, yeah, so people cannot only understand that these textures are come from the the materials, but also show the spatial relationship, the present, the poster array at the entrance of the exhibition. And my design just uh, happens to fit this strong uh, display method. So we just discuss it and we um, and stick them all over the entire post wall. This is really strong, I think. I also apply this method to into another version of the poster for rural, uh, for urban rural, the theme. Oh, it's just a video. Yeah, animations are mainly used online. So performance on the website is the most, uh, is what I care about the most. Um, in the fixed visual area, I just, um, I also behave in this way in order to have the impact uh, of repeated re refreshes like this. And the names of the, all the exhibitors are not the, uh, the most important here because um, the most important is, is actually the effect and the, the fringe theme and uh, of course the Cornell logo. So you don't, you don't need to read every line in the animation. So, uh, but the point is to, uh, to attract everyone to, to, to be willing to read uh, the introduction down here. Oops. Okay, apply this method. Oh, no, not this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is the cover and the, at the opening of the symposium.
also. Well, it's just a new, kind of a new project I made. Um, IAM, I mean, stands for International Architects, Architects Mission. It's a new international architecture lines uh, form, founded by Wei Dongma, a Chinese partner of uh, Tadoando Architects and a uh, Japanese architecture uh, journal, A plus U. So as an, um, as an organization of architects and other talented designers worldwide, the only thing I am is concerned is people. So therefore, the logo I design can be, uh, can be interp interpreted as a composition of, the, of seven letters I. And uh, also, um, it can be viewed as a subject, uh, subject verb structure, I am, which can be followed with the names of the architecture and the designers in, in I am to emphasize the importance of the, their contribution. So more importantly, the I, the I am logo is designed as an ambigram. Um, it's because this upside down version uh, still be the same one. So I was inspired by the Lumi, uh, Illuminati, I, I, which I, I read from the novel, the Da Vinci Code. I don't know, yes, if it's popular, it's quite popular, right? And that cre it creates very architectural spatial uh, experience and yet very recognizable as a, as a graphic expression. You know, this animation emphasized the, that IAM is a combination of I. So it's, it's quite simple and clear. So ambigram just makes it um, easier to recognize. Uh, for example, if you put a piece of paper uh, uh, with the I am logo on, on it, you uh, just uh, not just the people in front of you, you can read it clearly. Uh, behind you, the people behind you also read it in the same way. So ambigram just doubles its readability. Oops. I also inspired the Tadoendo theory. I also used use the square, circle, and the triangle to match the logo as its um, supplemental elements, forms. And uh, I, tried, uh, I tried to put it on the cover in some magazines. I just, yeah, to feel how it looks like. Though. Actually, the most of the pictures were taken by me, maybe six or seven, yeah. Official website design. Also, some decoration and uh, refunding. At the same time, you know, sometimes you know, triangle is a really special shape because it has, it has direction. Also, some furniture design and uh, dec decoration. Also, toe bags. Not bad, I think. So, as a graphic designer, I also participate, uh, pa participated uh, uh, the Shenzhen, uh, in the Shenzhen, the ninth. Uh, by city Biennale of the architecture and the urbanism, Longgang sub venue. Yeah, just located in the Shenzhen RBR, um, low carbon city. And uh, RBR focus on the creating a green environment and uh, lead a healthy life. So therefore the green is the core. I, I need to follow from the beginning to the end. Also the capital C here means, means the carbon and the, and the the core position in a group when um, uh, where it's easier to focus on. So the concept is that everyone needs to focus on the low carbon city. The professor Fei Wang is the chief curator. And the last project I, I would like to share is my, ho my own hotel. And uh, this is probably the, the, the most comprehensive project I've, I've done. And uh, this is it's in Shanghai, and we are our own clients, um, designers and managers as well. So we are, um, it's, a, it's a complicated interdisciplinary uh, commercial project, including the multi-living area, um, multiple dwelling, and uh, co-working, and the creative uh, catering, and uh, uh, diverse events. So I created the uh, English, English name hotel. Uh, your side, which means uh, I'm always on your side. And uh, to match the pronunciation and the meaning of the Chinese version, you zai. Um, you zai means here, I'm here. So, yeah. so the English and Chinese means uh, are not literal translation, but very, have a very uh, interesting dialogues. And uh, as one of the fun, uh, five partners, I have been responsible for all the overall branding strategies everything else from the beginning, 
This is our co-working desk. The check-in desk near the, the near the entrance. And it's not just lobby. It's or it's a um, cafe and a, and a bar. Also, it's a restaurant, hosting our guests upstairs and uh, all people from the outside. Uh, we have capsule rooms for only for uh, individuals. The second floor rooms. Yeah, the third floor. It's all lofts. Uh, Wei Minglu, who is our uh, alumnus, and I illustrated a multiple-scale Chinese uh, long scroll showing the multiplicity of this unconventional hotel to invite viewers to immerse in. This show the part of the first floor, part of the second floor, and this third floor. Yeah, some of the package design, I just borrow some architectural uh, concepts like the axonometric drawing done by Charlie, who is our MS alumnus. And I took our hotel apart and exposed all the details in each floor. It's like I opened a toy. I really, I really like this kind of expression. So I just bought And the two completely opposite stickers, decorative stickers on the, on the glass wall. I say it's opposite because uh, you can see clearly the showing the it's showing the day and night and uh, the ocean and the mountain and the bird and the beer and also the logo downside and upside. So yeah, I just did it for fun. This is a benefit of design for myself. I can do whatever I like and I ho just hope that maybe someone can find these surprises I prepared for them. Yeah, some plastic bag, uh, glo gloves package, and uh, the bathroom. A special design, a gray, not a white bathroom, because um, uh, for guests to enc encourage them to, to, to wear it, to get out of the rooms, not stay in beds. So yeah, the hood is also, also designed for this purpose. Our restaurant has its own branding, like our logo. On the glass wall, you can see it uh, means bistro uh, opened by your side hotel. It also means this uh, bistro uh, always on your side or by your side. So, yeah, the t shirts designed for stuff, so you can see. I used the UR instead of the your to emphasize the your side identity. Yeah, I'm just also, I'm also responsible for the, all the territories um, design. So, these are projects. Um, yeah, includes all things I have touched, I've ever touched. So it's such a challenge, but I, I really love it. Just pictures I took for them. Yeah. Also during pandemic, uh, Professor Fei Wan, and I just held two architecture uh, photography exhibition in Shanghai. After all, we we couldn't travel. Uh, at all, so it's more more like a review and uh, or or summary. After we traveled all around the world before, and the 2,000 pictures, photos for the masterpieces. So we try to combine uh, furniture and books to to uh, into our exhibition. So uh, uh, which we believe is a good idea, and uh, therefore each and Lin, which is the best high-end um, furniture store in China, uh, especially for Italian furniture. Um, sponsored the venues and the Tashin, uh, the, art, the, the art book publisher, sponsored beautiful books in order to you know create some interesting, more interesting dialogues. This is the first action exhibition. Yeah, this is the first one. This is clearly I took a picture from the Scarpa and the Barragan. And, and called the first exhibition name, uh, is named Photography Exhibition of our, our Modernist Architects. And also the second one called a lot, Another Le Corbusier. This is from Chandigarh. And we also host um, special events for architects and Syracuse architecture students.
Oh, this is Charlie. He says he has a tattoo from Le, Le Corbusier's artwork. Okay, more um, possibility f are from architects, from you guys. So um, after teaching in circular architecture uh, for, for three semesters, and I have learned so much from you. So uh, it's not just a single um, educational, you know, output or input. It's a multidisciplinary um, uh, communication. So your possibilities are um, endless. Um, yeah, this is from the first PE course in Shanghai. And during this semester, I just invited lots of famous graphic designers and artists to uh, yeah, to attend, to give us uh, guest lectures. So like 26, studio from Kaffa. They are also my high school classmates. Also, and that is, uh, who is an expert of, of wayfinding design in China. Also short studio from Zhang Shuo. He's a famous uh, graphic designer who was trained as an architect. And me studio, Ronald Dao from, from Toronto. As a white creative from Shang Shu, Shang Wu, Grants, Zhen Suo Wu, he's a really famous artist in China. So this is from the, my second PE course in, in Shanghai, maybe uh, in 2021. Uh, collaborated with the Ziyue Liu, um, who, uh, who taught our, our course studio, and uh, he is responsible for the All Sana um, projects in China. And the, the, their studio theme is about, uh, during the semester, is about zoo. So uh, my PE is accordingly to, 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 to do a branding from their zoo design. So the, I like this one, Ari, the design by Ari Zhang, Nicholas Cheng, and the Lily Wei. And Wei Lei <laughs> decided to, to design for, for penguin. Yeah, they, what they uh, consider is not just to, not only you no know, graphic design like we funding, they all, um, I push them to do more. Like furniture design. Yeah, just using their, their, their branding identity. Also, how to arrange the furniture in the, the space. Also, uh, still do design by Hai Hui Zhu and uh, Xin Qi Meng. Yeah, the animal they chose is emu, which is a uh, kind of a bird. It looks more like ostrich, I think. So if, in their branding, they have um, show man, shown many talents for graphic design, especially their wayfinding design and uh, program design and some products. Yeah. Some design are good enough to, 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 to apply it into the real, real projects. I have to admit, just brilliant. Also, this is from my first PE collaborated with uh, Professor Fei Wang. Uh, their studio theme is about the cultural center. So, MASC, this project, um, designed by Ilin Mo, uh, Bo Han Li, and uh, uh, Cheng Liu. I like their naming because MASC stands for Mask uh, Application Shanghai Center. Really clever. So and their concept is to recycle uh, face mask to during or after the pandemic. They even use the recycled uh, materials to replace their own facade design as an ad ad advertisement wall. So it's really, they're talented, I have to say. And the application of the facade uh, reflects the meaning of the building itself. So it's really, this is a really brilliant idea. And also they even learned after effects and, and, and Adobe software to, de to design animation posters. Last one, Soundscape. Uh, it's a museum of sound uh, designed by Yun Tian Zhang and Zi Zhou. Yeah. And it's basically uh, uh, a dark room because uh, what they want to visit to experience is not light, as uh, enjoy the sound. So there are seven areas to exp uh, experience in their museums. So they designed several icons accordingly. And in fact, when I heard their concept um, at the beginning, um, I pushed them to try to do a kind of acoustic, uh, a sound wayfinding design. And I know it's, it's, it's totally not visual design. And, but still, 
branding strategy. So, but um, they was like crazy and cannot imagine what I said. <laughs> but in the end, they just found out a kind of you know uh, luminous paint to solve the problem perfectly. So, I still an amazing solution. Yeah, this not that a little bit dark, but yeah, it's a luminous paint. We found a design just near the elevator door. And the, they just flattened the, the building into paper folding. So the map design just complete. Also, even more, they elevate um, branding up to a romantic level, I have to say. Um, the, the inspiration is, is sound waves. Um, they recorded three types of the, of the waves co uh, corresponding to uh, three meanings. Uh, I miss you, hello, and I love you. And they just rotate the, 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 the three waves, and they got three kinds of um, spinning tops, model them, and the three D printing. Yeah, they just, they just set up an, an amazing service that visitors can can customize their sounds as a souvenir or as a gift to send out. It's really. Only, only if the sounds must be, you know, must be short enough to, to, to model and print. So there are talents. You are, you are talented, actually. Um, your credible ideas just can blow my mind. So yeah, this is all possibility I would like to, to share today. And uh, yeah, by the way, I, I don't know how the other possibilities in the future, but these three are certain for 2024. I have been already been preparing for. Um, Peter Eisenman's exhibition in Shanghai, uh, in Shenzhen, uh, curation by uh, Professor Fei Wang, and also uh, uh, the branding of, of Tada and the Gallery in Shanghai, and uh, a, pat a pattern collaboration uh, with the Chinese women's wear brand called Zhizhi. So finally, I finally got, I just go all the way around back to fashion design in the forms of graphic design. Yeah, in fact, it's, they have produced some of, uh, some of it. Some of it is like this one. Yeah, I super look forward to it. Okay, I hope I can will share more. I have a, I have a more chances to share with you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Ian. This is a really awesome presentation of very comprehensive and expansive amount of work that really transcends the boundaries of things and disciplines. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank You've you. really done a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, um, before we open up, many. I have a question I'm burning to ask. Um, have you considered tapping into architecture and becoming uh, an architect? Uh, <laughs> now that you've done everything? Uh, yes, probably not, because yeah, I have heard uh, someone said, you know, architecture is kind of, you know, if you want, would like to learn architecture, you, you, you need to to read not architecture booth, books, but like books about philosophy and and history, art history, and uh, maybe nature and uh, uh, mathematics. I think it's really <laughs> overwhelming. I think it's not <laughs> for me. But I, yeah, probably it will happen because yeah, um, I have uh, many architectural friends, especially F Professor Fei Wang. <laughs> they, probably can, they can support me a little bit, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure people have questions. Yeah, we probably have time for two. Hi, uh, thank you so much for the lecture. There were some super, super interesting thank concepts you. in there that you've developed. And uh, I guess my question for you is, with the development of artificial intelligence, how do you see that playing into your idea of metamorphosis as a whole? Oh, actually, uh, I'm not hate uh, AI, but <laughs> but sometimes it's like it's a perfect tool for me to use. You know, sometimes I need to find the inspiration, uh, or um, I got inspiration at first, but I cannot find a way to to you know, to for, perform. You know, the like development of my design. So just I can use the AI as a tool to to perform the process. Like you know, like some sketches or or scripts for 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 clients to see. You you, know, you can see oh there were maybe five uh, 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 directions to to consider. You you can choose one, but these are not my 
my my my opinions, but I can yeah. the AI just can conclude all the possibilities for me. So yeah, I think so. Thank you. Um, you keep referring to your old designs as immature or naive. I was wondering yes. what makes a mature design and what makes an immature design. Oh uh, yes, really a good question. Um, you know, I, I I I always you know keep talking with my what, uh, some of my students and some of my uh, some of the professors uh, like how um, how can I, how can we stop the design? Uh, because you know you you just uh, you can keep designing the. The, 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 you know, uh, like architecture for, for, for maybe one month or maybe one year. So how can we just stop it? You know, just find the perfect like, like <laughs> period. So yeah, so um, yeah. But we, we, uh, we actually, we, 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 we didn't get any <laughs> answers for it actually. You, especially, uh, I think the periods definitely from you yourself and uh, find the uh, most uh, suitable uh, periods and like maybe one mature design is not that complicated and as, as a direct and also you have a name right i i keep i keep talking to to, to students like you have you have to naming your, you have to have a naming of your projects and the, because we cannot just uh, you know uh, ask uh, we we're talking about a, a, a project uh, 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 from the students, like our uh, uh, so the, the paint background projects, or some, you know, it's, so you have to have a name so we can discuss more, more clearly. And yeah, and also, uh, yeah, we can still speak out. <laughs> I guess I have a follow-up question to mm. that. You call yourself, I love that you call yourself um, a problem-solving practitioner. Yes. How do you, do you have a set workflow then when you like are encountered like with a super giant like, you know, issue that you start solving? Um, do you, where do you start tackling the questions? Do you set up goals for yourself? And when do you think you've solved the question? Actually, um, there are different frames for me to, to design. And uh, always I, I can, I met so many kinds of projects and they were so different and I can learn so many things from them. So probably uh, I chose to use different uh, kind of design frame, you know, sometimes it's original uh, and I always can, I, I, I can um, uh, how to say, invent a new design frame to, to, to uh, fit the project sometimes. Yeah, so um, like, you know, I, I, I will borrow some ideas from you guys, <laughs> from Professor Fei Wang and from my other friends, like, uh, and I prefer talking my projects with my friends. So I will ask their, their <laughs> suggestions. Yeah. Thank you. We have two more questions. Thank you. So, uh, I know that uh, you are you have done a lot of work in all kinds of design media, and I'm especially interested in photography. So, from which of the projects did you feel like you were the most photographic, or during which of the projects did you feel the most sort of urge to take pictures of it, or just to take pictures? Mm, you know, I have mentioned I met, I met some masterpiece of architecture. You know, for the first time before I knew them. So yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, no, I've never thought it before. Yeah, but I just see it as a you know, they are the same. Actually, the same uh, because I I didn't know them before, so I just uh, uh, take them photos from my, my 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 own point of view, like more graphic, more two D, or my. More details, you know. I Professor Fei Wang just prefer, you know, take pictures like the whole, uh, the whole views, like the, 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 to use the iPhones, like the the, 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 the function, you know, to, to But I I love I prefer details, so I I may I may uh, take him. I love taking pictures, you know, for more details, like more um, and, and with people together. And I love, you know, uh, people in the pictures, like even animals and other things like trees. I don't, 
I don't believe that, you know, sometimes the, the tree just does stand in front of the architecture and it's really annoying, but I don't think so. So, yeah. I um, mm, especially love the, 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 I don't know how to say the modernist architect, architects. Uh, yeah. Uh, Modern. Modernist. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That maybe the four or five uh, architects master. Yes. I prefer, I prefer their, 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 their works. Okay, thank you for the great talk. And maybe it's a follow-up of Daniel's question, but in a twisted way. I feel like a connecting thread um, and uh, that's happening throughout your presentation as well as maybe that's where metamorphosis happens as actually the translation and interplay between two-dimensional and three-dimensional stuff, meaning uh, in the very beginning you show us, okay, you are taking inspiration from 2D images, photography, and then yes. morph that yes. into your fashion design, which becomes a 3D object in the end. And um, some projects you show us is like graphic design, but then applied to three-dimensional architectural space, meaning those hanging posters uh, that's in Corbusier's monastery, for mm. example. And as we all know, the translation or interplay between two-dimensional and third-dimensional is never literal. So, and I would imagine like glitches happening there. There's also a photo you showed us towards the end, which is the exhibition, but you blow up a photograph and that photograph becomes a spatializer. It's attached to a wall and it's defining three-dimensional space. So I just want you to maybe um, provide us with some interesting examples or like um, glitches, quote unquote, that's happening in this process of translating 2D idea into 3D fashion or architecture space or applying your 2D graphic design in architecture space. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, I, I actually I have, I've done uh, kind of, you know, borrow the architecture I, I, I took so many pictures for architecture, and I actually, uh, when I was a gra uh, undergraduate student, I, I just I didn't show show you guys and so as kind of a fashion projects just borrowed from the uh, from from the architecture. Like I just take from photos for. In, in, it's a, I don't know what it is, but I just took. Um, it's from Beijing, and. Uh, it's a it's a Beijing it's MoMA in Beijing. Beijing MoMA. I don't know who is the architect, but I I, I actually modern uh, adjust the, the, some pictures into the fashion design and just Photoshop them and see and see you know so many uh, straight lines in the in the fashion design the work my work and it's really uh, direct actually. And my tutor just said to me, it's just really. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's just like Photoshop is not a, a costume design or fashion design. And uh, I think, yeah, I, I was, you know, uh, you, 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 you have seen my, some of my projects. Some, some like, you know, some of them is like 2D, some like graphic way. So, yeah, so that project is kind of uh, not that 2D, but still the photography <laughs> collection in the fashion design. So um, now we will show it. Maybe in the future, maybe we, uh, we, we will discuss it. Like, I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like you're doing something incredibly difficult, which is putting your design intuition into verbal expressions mm. that sometimes yes. doesn't happen because I feel like there's a lot of really beautiful visual identities that you own as a designer that doesn't need to be put into words and we can all get just from looking at your work, which I think is really beautiful. Um, is there any closing questions? I guess, yeah, we'll give it to Nan's previous student, I guess. Oh, hi, thank you. Hello. Thank you so hello much for student. the, yeah, yeah hi, uh, for the amazing lecture and introduction of all the work. So um, it just feels for me the word metamorphosis is not only about how you develop and expand your work um, toward all those different in, like interdisciplinaries as you, you have trying to like, expand so much of your practices into not only branding, also fashion and all those, and also the word metamorphosis also represent how your personal growth with the relationship of design strategies, right? So I was wondering, um, except for um, tackling, tackling all the 
problem solving strategies. I was wondering if there's something that you kept as consistent throughout all your design practices for all those different fields and works that something that you just firmly believing onto that you kept that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no, no, actually, it's not most of, uh, not all my works are uh, inspired, inspired by, you know, uh, solving the problems, actually. But uh, more, it's more like, you know, maybe uh, it's about asking more questions. Yeah. And uh, to myself, sometimes, you know, I, I love fashion design. It's more, it's, it's because I, it's, it's, some, it's more emotional uh, compared with the, you know, industrial design. Uh, so I can I can perform myself my emotion my uh, concept my you know my respect possibility of respect so yeah mm. but yes still I think still the solving the problem is the is the most important for for, for not for me for everyone right yeah yeah to, to, yeah to teach some no as an as an uh, as an as an designers we need to you know to to learn how to you know, to teach everyone to get a better life, I have mentioned, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for taking us on this really personal, but also very reflective journey of the life of a designer. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great evening. Yeah, have a great day, everyone.